Just by looking behind me, you can probably guess that one of the most frequent questions that I get on the channel is where should one start their study of Western esotericism? And the answer is books. But what books? One of the central problems with studying this topic, and really any topic, is that we always kind of start in the middle of things, in, in media rest, as they say in literature, and to make matters worse, so much of the literature about Western esotericism is, uh, let's, let's be diplomatic and, and call it uneven. So after a few years of thinking about this, I've decided to come up with what I think is a solid core library of Western esotericism, or at least of Western esotericism that I've have some experience in, a bit of expertise in, and it's generally covered by this channel. This list I'm going to go over with you throughout this episode will provide you, I think, with a solid, academically rigorous bibliography from which you can begin your building your own library of Esoterica. So let's explore my top tier must-haves, the list more generally, how I made the decisions that I did, and what will come next for this library of Esoterica. If you're interested in magic, hermetic philosophy, alchemy, Kabbalah, or the history of the occult, or just cool, weird, old books, make sure to subscribe here to Esoterica and check out my other content on topics like this. Also, if you want to support this work of providing accessible, scholarly, and free content on topics in Esotericism here on YouTube for free, I hope you consider supporting my work over at my Patreon with a one-time donation. You can use the Super Thanks option there below the video, or you can pick up some of our uh, pretty cool black metal style merch over at the store tab. But now, to the library of Esoterica. Or, in other words, if I knew then what I know now, this would be how I'd build an Esoterica library from the very foundations up. I'm Dr. Justin Sledge, and welcome to Esoterica, where we explore the arcane in history, philosophy, and religion. In my experience, people into esotericism are also people who love books. The older, the better, and that old book smell, the better. I totally get that. I'm a rare book collector and dealer, and I literally am scheming right now about totally gutting and renovating my entire studio slash study slash library because of my constant ravenous need for more and more books. But buying books in the field of Western esotericism can be pretty fraught. The material ranges from purely academic to purely practitioner-oriented, from very solid scholarship to, to downright rubbish not worthy of a uh, dumpster fire, from great introductions and overviews to incredibly highly specialized monographs. Further, the field of Western esotericism is simply so broad and so interdisciplinary that it's hard to know a solid text from subject to subject. Just because you know a good bit about alchemy or witchcraft doesn't mean you know much about medieval magic or, or Gnosticism. But that's precisely the task of, well, doing esoterica. And, and trust me, I know your pain. I've spent decades trying to parse this field, buying a book that ended up going way over my head because it was far too specialized, given what I knew about the subject at that time, getting to getting something that looked very promising, only to find out, you know, a chapter in, that it was a long-form, demented rant by some conspiracy theorist or racist. Or both. They typically tend to be both. It's hard out here for someone interested in Western esotericism wanting reliable, accessible, and scholarly work. In fact, that's precisely why I started this channel to begin with, and why almost every episode of Esoterica concludes with book recommendations. One, because I want you to know and check my sources, but also because no YouTube video 
no matter how good it is, will ever, ever be exhaustive of any subject. An esoteric episode is a place to start and never a place to conclude one's intellectual journey. And I think that's true of any YouTube content. But this episode has been long in coming. As I mentioned in the introduction, I get asked for book recommendations all the time, and especially for sort of foundational, essential, or what you might call lay of the land texts. So that's kind of what I've tried to create and what is honestly going to be a living document that I'm calling the Esoterica Library. But before turning to the library itself, the links which you can find in the description and in the comments below and on my website and kind of everywhere I hang out, I want to talk a little bit about the methodology by which I came up with this list. Why would you care about my methodology? Well, because in my opinion, methodology is often just as important it's probably even more important than outcomes, and it informs what is and what isn't going to be on this list. You know, you probably won't agree with all the decisions that I've made, but you do deserve to understand why I made the decisions I did, and I hope to give really solid reasons for those decisions. So let's talk a little bit about methodology. Firstly, this list is overwhelmingly, almost exclusively, academic texts. Why? Well, because I'm an academic, and that's what I know. It's as simple as that. Further, because academic texts are subject to the peer review process, and while peer review is far, far from perfect, that process at least lets you know that the community of scholarship has vetted that book and its information. So for better and for worse, these texts at least represent the general consensus of where the community of academic scholarship is on any given topic at that time. Of course, that will shift. What is the community consensus will change. In fact, I've included some texts that were incredibly important a generation ago, especially those by Dame Frances Yates, that were incredibly important, but have been generally superseded by a whole new generation of scholarship. And if we're going to be honest here, the truth about a topic is not created, is not created by consensus of academics or anyone else. Now, I've also included some non-academic texts whose scholarship is, at least to my mind, very serious and important. And those texts are often by practitioners who are ingenious. These texts will give you access to the state of the field, allow you to have informed opinions about that state of the field, and allow you to agree and disagree thoughtfully as you become part of the conversation, which I think at some level is a goal in all of this. But don't be fooled. No book in this field is going to give you somehow a definitive account of what the actual story is, mostly because the field of Western esotericism is very much still in its infancy. Secondly, virtually none of these volumes are practitioner oriented. Well, why? Very simply, I don't have that expertise. I'm creating this reference to make you better informed about history, philosophy, and re the religious nature of these topics, and not to teach you how to practice magic, alchemy, Kabbalah, astrology, etc. I'm not a practitioner, and it would just be flatly inappropriate for me to make such recommendations. However, I would argue that any practitioner, or really any religious person more generally, would greatly benefit from having a firm foundational understanding of historical context, philosophical arguments, and the religious development along with textual and linguistic competency in their field. Religion, spirituality, and philosophy should be deepened by critical historical analysis, and religions and spiritualities which, well, ones which resist historical critical analysis are, to my mind, highly suspect. This list, it ain't gonna make you a wizard. Sorry. But I wouldn't also take any wizard too seriously that doesn't have command over a chunk of the books on this list. Further, I've also selected for works which are primarily in English because, well, that's the overwhelming majority of viewers of this channel's native, and often most people, at least in the United States, they're their only language. But there is a ton of extremely important scholarship on these topics, especially in French, Italian, and German. 
but also a great many texts that are available still only in classical languages. I'll be expanding this list at some point, I don't know when, to include contemporary non-English language literature that is also foundational to the field. But I've also included some resources for you to learn to read both French and German, but also the range of classical languages that are necessary for working in this field. That would include Latin, Greek, Hebrew, Coptic, Aramaic, etc. Learning to read text in their original languages, I, I don't know how to say it, it's simply indispensable for working in this field. Again, recall that language itself is metaphysically important to this entire genre. And reading in translations alone, it's never going to be it's never going to be totally sufficient. So check out some of the end of the list for some language learning resources to beef up or add to your, I don't know, arsenal of classical languages. And again, also look for updates for non-English literature in the near future on the list because it's incredibly important. Another criteria I've tried to follow for selecting for these volumes is that they're academically rigorous without being overly specialized, being foundational and introductory without going into too much depth too quickly, but also not being just like souped up Wikipedia articles. It's important to get the lay of the land before diving into highly specialized monographs, and nearly all of these texts are organized to allow you to do just that. Now, that's not to say that these texts aren't sometimes incredibly rigorous and often pretty difficult. They are. Some of these texts are hard, but they aren't 300 page deep dives into one school of Gnosticism or 500 page analysis of every single manuscript of the Sefer Zohar and its printing transmission. That's all important, of course, but you'll come to those kinds of texts as you work your way up in your expertise and by consulting the bibliographies of the volumes that are actually on this list. Yep, your best jumping off point from this list is going to be to go to the bibliographies of these very books and then consult those and, well, dive deeper. A kind of corollary to this point of me not picking any highly specialized text for this list is that I've also tried to select for books that are more or less affordable. Now, that's an incredibly relative benchmark depending on where you are in the world, but I've done my best to cut out all of those damned $300 books from the publisher that shall not be named. But are these books cheap? No, academic publishing is a cartel that scams both the authors that write the books and the people that buy them, and you should, I don't know, curse them. Though, I'll be honest, once you move a bit deeper into this list, the specialization and the price of these books is all going to jump in order of magnitude. I don't know what to do about that. But I bet you're resourceful, and I bet you can find these texts through standard and... Let's call them magical means. I bet you have the ability to conjure these texts directly from the void, from the ether. Another limitation of mine that you can see in this list is that it's basically only covering the period of time that I have some expertise in. Basically, I'm trying to cover topics in the ancient Near East, up through Greco-Roman times, the medieval period, the Renaissance, the early modern Latin West, with the list wrapping up with 17th century theosophy and a little bit of Rosicrucianism, at least up to this point. Why? Well, because that's where this channel primarily focuses and frankly my expertise just runs off a cliff about you know, 1800. So I simply don't run much into contemporary occultism. However, I will slowly be expanding the list to include things like Freemasonry, Illuminism, especially philosophy in the occult, the respective English and French occult revivals, and then perhaps later some traditionalism, mesmerism, spiritualism, again, and maybe some other more contemporary occult topics as well. But at this point, I mean, the list is 26 pages long as it is, and honestly, it's the reading of a better part of a lifetime. So I am hoping to build out a more contemporary list like this, either with the help of some colleagues or just let them cover it. Let them make the list because that's where their expertise lies and not mine, frankly. I've also selected as much as I can for texts that are available, for books that are in print. The study of Western esotericism has been so marginalized since we transitioned from Inquisition to Ivory Tower 
and many of the most important foundational texts, despite being incredibly essential, received very small print runs way back in the 50s and remain long out of print. So asking you to find a copy of the book that sometimes appear on rare book sites for hundreds of dollars isn't just a thing I'm going to do. A great example of this would be the absolute most important study of Cornelius Agrippa is now it's now long out of print book. It's tough to find. I've never even seen random PDFs of it on the internet. And a paperback of it, just a paperback, not even printed well, sells for over $200. And yet it's essential for any student of Agrippa. There are dozens of versions of this song I could sing, but I'm, I'm just not going to include these on the list. However, I will make one exception to this rule, though I will come back and just include some of those books though. However, the exception, if you can, through whatever means available to you, do obtain a complete edition of Thorndike's A History of Magic and Experimental Science in eight volumes. Do so. Do so, do so, do so. No more comprehensive study like this exists at all. And while it's not perfect and it's dated in some respects, scholars today are still just filling the gaps in this profound monument of scholarship. Go to auctions, go to library sales. That's how I found my copy. I think the Indianapolis Public Library sold theirs for like 200 bucks on Abe's list. You can get PDFs and get them printed out in various uh, places on the internet, but this is a text, one text I would say, even though it's out of print, I would highly encourage you to find it. Finally, this list is designed and organized fundamentally to empower you to educate yourself. Some of the guiding principles for this list were something like, if I were doing a short introductory seminar, what would be the absolute recommended reading for such a short seminar? Or what are the minimal text, but the essential text on a subject for someone to have on their shelf about alchemy or Gnosticism? Or given what I know now, how would I build a library of esoterica from the foundations up? There are so few institutions of learning that make this information accessible. There's so much misinformation online and in print and so much gatekeeping by academics and pseudo gurus that can make someone looking for reliable information feel profoundly misdirected and honestly disempowered. This list is meant to do the opposite of that. It's meant to empower you to become the best educator you're ever going to get. You. Every one of these books, I think, can be read and understood by nearly anyone watching this channel with a little work. I mean, you're going to have to do some work. You can absolutely dive as deep as you want. You can learn those ancient languages. I really believe anyone can learn Latin or Coptic. And you can read those texts in the original languages, and you can become highly proficient in this field as long as you're willing to do the work. Don't let this list intimidate you. Let it be an opportunity, even a challenge, for you to start and deepen your learning. Don't try to become an expert on everything all at once on this list. Follow your passion. Follow your curiosity. That's what really matters. Follow your curiosity for learning. Pick a subject that interests you and see where it takes you. I just want this list to empower and inspire you. So let's see a bit of what's on the list. The first and best text I'd recommend is Hannah Kraft's Western Esotericism, A Guide for the Perplexed. This text best, and in my opinion, most clearly lays out the entirety of the field. It discusses the overall history and major philosophical and spiritual trends, along with locating the field in sort of Western knowledge production more generally. It's clear and it's highly efficient at conveying information. Lastly, the bibliography of that book is absolutely the best jumping off point for further exploration, and it in fact greatly informs my own reading list. Simply put, if you want to start studying Western esotericism, or if you've been studying it for a while, this is still an absolute best starting point. Though I was told by Professor Hanekraf that he wants to do a second edition of that, so that might be coming around the pike as well. So. I'd recommend getting this one, and I'm sure the second edition will be marvelous as well. However, after giving the Hanegraaff book a couple of reads, now you're going to want to get either a deeper impression of the field more generally, or begin drilling down into a specific subject area. 
If you want a deeper understanding of the field more broadly, I've created two groups of what I call foundational texts. One group focuses on primary texts and reliable translations, which I think matters a great deal, on various aspects of Western esotericism. These primary texts should be read in unison with appropriate foundational secondary texts, which I also contain a list, and these help to explain, situate, and contextualize those primary texts, which can often be bewildering out of context. Overall, this section of the library is about 30 full books, which would form the core, at least to my mind, of a honestly world-class library on the study of Western esotericism prior to around 1650. Represented here is everything from the best foundational text in virtually every aspect of the study of Western esotericism, including things like magic at various historical epochs, alchemy, Gnosticism, Hermeticism, historical heresy, because that's fun, you know, the witch trials, because those were not fun, Kabbalah and more, all the kind of stuff we do on the channel. I'm also sure that many of you already have many of these books, but maybe there's a few that you don't, and you could take a look at these and grab them. But again, work dialectically between primary and secondary literature. The secondary literature is no replacement for reading the primary stuff. The primary stuff is bewildering often without the secondary literature as you carefully and systematically proceed. I've read every one of those books in those lists a few times now, and I'm still picking them back up and discovering new things on rereading them. So it's worth reading them, marking them up, filling notebooks so that you can, I don't know, totally ravage them, and then get new copies for starting the process all over again. Finally, assuming that you have the more foundational text, or now you want to drill down into specific subfields, I provided what I take to be the foundational text in those domains. Now, I'll admit here that the distributions are not totally right. Something feels wrong about some of these distributions, so I'm still working on getting what seems to be a solid fit in terms of, I don't know, the distribution of these books. But I think these texts do represent what are the absolute essential books that I would put on a syllabus, for instance, if I were doing a brief intro level seminar. And I think you can't get by without them in the field. Now, is this list exhaustive? Of course it's not exhaustive. No, this list is by definition meant to be essential and non-exhaustive in character, but I think a solid foundation for all the topics that I'm covering in it. But from these texts, you should be able to dive even deeper into specialized monographs and articles. I'm also going to be working to put together a list of specialized publishers that you can throw thousands of dollars at and get three books, and some journals that you'll also probably need to have university access to, but those will also help you with the lay of the land as well. But this reading list or bibliography represents, I think, a very solid resource for anyone in the beginning to intermediate stages of their exploration of these texts, the literature and traditions of Western esotericism, up to about 1650. I mean, I wish I would have had a list like this when I started off. Of course, the list is not perfect, by no means. And if you think there's something I should remove or something I should definitely add, but again, only given the methodology that I've outlined earlier in this episode, let me know in the comments. I'm going to collaborate or work with someone on expanding this list and creating another post-1650-ish list, and then prepare some important non-English monographs along with some specialized publishers and journal articles you may want to keep an eye out for, so that'll be in the development program. But I hope this Esoterica Library project is helpful for you in the process of you building a library that empowers you on your educational, spiritual, or philosophical path. The links for the actual documents are affiliate links, so you should know that. So I do get a small cut of any books that you do end up purchasing. I mean, this list took a lot of work to put together, and so I hope that you don't mind them being affiliate links. But I will also say if you don't want to purchase them from Amazon for lots of legitimate reasons, purchase them through whatever book dealers you want to work with that you feel the best about. Again, I'm happy to put the list out there for anyone to use. But as the Mutus Liber tells us, Ora lege lege lege, re lege, labora et invenius. Pray, read, 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 reread, work. And then you will discover. Maybe. Thank you for watching Esoterica. Until next time, I'm Dr. Justin Sledge, and 
This is Esoterica, where we explore the arcane in history, philosophy, and religion.